So I'm, I'm going to talk more about this on Sunday morning. So I'm, I'm just going to run through a quick overview and hopefully it'll be a teaser for to attract some of you away from, from Bob's talk on Sunday morning. Um, and let's see. Uh, a little something to think about. Anybody else read the end? <coughs> so, I don't know. Will this, does this work? Yes, sorry. Oh, you know, What's that? Okay, the idea behind um, building a, a crushing plant. Uh, for one thing, I, I read a, on the second point, I read a, a blurb in a, a Department of Energy newsletter just a, about a week ago that said that by the end of this year there will be about two and a half billion gallons of biodiesel production capacity in the United States. And the problem with that is there's only about one and a half billion gallons of readily available feedstock. So all the other all the other feedstocks will be spoken very soon. Uh, so anybody who wants to get into this biodiesel game in the next few <coughs> years is going to be have they need some way to secure their feedstock, and growing their own may be the only way. The other idea behind this is if a if a group of farmers can get together who have the capacity to raise a few thousand acres of oil seed, then they can build a, a, a co-op and a, a crusher that can uh, do this cheaply enough for them to internalize their fuel costs. Uh, right now, just a, a 20 cent difference in, in uh, the cost of diesel fuel wipes out the profit margin for many, many farmers around the country. Okay, um, if, if you're going to get into this business, you need to realize at the very beginning that you're not doing this for the oil, you're doing it for the, the meal. The meal makes up about 60 to 80 percent of your total product. And if you're talking about, well, mostly I'm kind of talking to the concept of building a, a small scale, a community scale commercial plant. So that's, I'm, I'm calling that a million gallons of production per year. Oil is the side stream, and even though it may be the most valuable part of that, it, it still uh, represents a very small market. Gaining access to that feed market <coughs> is not easy, and it, I, I recommend that someone considering a plant of that scale, about a million gallons a year, take the time and invest the money to, do a, to develop that market over about two to five years before they start operating a plant like this. <laughs> so, the economics are, are critically dependent on the value of the meal. So, uh, animal feed is the only really viable market right now. Uh, there, there have been studies on using the uh, sulfur compounds that are present in mustard meal. Uh, modifying, perhaps genetically modifying the mustards uh, to optimize those, uh, those more toxic compounds as fungicides or insecticides or uh, various other kinds of things that could go back into culture, ag agriculture. Uh, or a very low value option, uh, bioenergy, pelletizing the, the meal for uh, burning in uh, wood fuel stoves uh, was another option that, that we considered. I, I did a lot of this research about uh, in the past couple of years while uh, doing feasibility studies for uh, crushing facilities of this scale in Wyoming and northeastern Colorado. And, and from there I, I worked on several uh, uh, business plans for these operations. So, the other problem with this is, can you really afford to make biodiesel out of your product? <coughs> At $4 a gallon, it's not really, it doesn't make much sense to make $2 a gallon or $3 a gallon of fuel out of it. So these are some of the logistics that you'd want to know about up front before you consider this. Um, to produce 27,000 tons of uh, 
Uh, soybeans, you need about 25 to 30,000 acres. For 13,000 tons of sunflower, you need around 10 to 12,000 acres, or around um, 12 to 15,000 acres, depending on what part of the country you're in, of course, uh, for the canola and mustard. So, at these rates, you can produce about a million gallons of oil per year, which you can feed into a, a community scale biodiesel plant. So, I'm just going to go over some of the schematics of uh, what's involved in this, and in my later talk, I'll go over uh, details of the economics and uh, some case studies and some of the equipment that's involved. There are two uh, primary methods for uh, for extracting the oil. Mechanical extraction actually is done as part of the, the chemical extraction process as well. Chemical extraction is the way the, the big boys do it. That's something that you're not going to see except in a plant that's that's producing at least a 10 million gallons of oil per year. So, um, sorry, I'm, it's been a while since I've been on this. We, we recommend that um, for processing the, the uh, oil or vat, the three fatty acids that are present there uh, are, are more easily taken care of at the biodiesel plant. Um, so we don't require a lot of refining as part of the oil uh, oil crushing operation, oil seed crushing, but um, uh, just a, a minimum amount of, of pre-processing uh, of the oil is necessary before it goes into the, the biodiesel process. Yeah. Yeah. What sort of FFA might you anticipate for vegetable oil, it's usually around two to five percent. So, it's, it's not really <coughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay, here's a, a schematic of what goes into the, the mechanical extraction process for for oil seeds. Uh, now, this process, there are a hundred different ways to set this up, and it's really more art than science. Which processes are actually used and which are repeated? Um, they really depend on uh, your choice of feedstocks, the economics of your particular process, the engineering that goes into it, and the markets, and, and what those markets require as far as the quality of your product. So uh, with seed preparation, that may involve uh, removing hulls or uh, removing uh, sand or other foreign matter. Uh, they mean it may be necessary to thaw uh, winter seed or uh, to dry it out. So, uh, and it also may include uh, preliminary crushing of the seed through, like a roller mill, for example. Uh, from there, it goes into a, a screw press, and the, the cold press is uh, where virgin oil comes from because that uh, seed hasn't been heated or otherwise manipulated. The oil that comes out. Is uh, has somewhat different properties from uh, oil that's been pressed uh, from meal that's after several times or mechanic or chemically extracted. So that's where the term virgin oil comes from. Uh, from there, uh, the additional oil that remains in the seed has to be extracted by. It, it's mostly contained in the in the cells. And so to completely destroy those cells to make that oil available, uh, you have to put it through, for example, an extruder, which uses an explosive expansion of the material to break apart those, those cells. Um, another way is to cook it. So um, the particulars of which technology is chosen depends on your feedstock. Uh, from there, uh, it'll go through a uh, another screw press, <coughs> but at this time it goes into the press at several hundred degrees typically. So the hot press extracts the, the remaining available oil, and in this process we can get out about 60 to 75 percent of the total oil content. Uh, from there, if you want to 
get the remaining 25 or 30 percent of the oil content out, you have to go to the chemical oil extraction process. So uh, at this, for a, for a small scale operation, the meal usually with that remaining oil is sold as feed. But that residual oil brings in a, a premium that adds energy to the meal, and so it sells at a, a price on the market that's considered that's uh, comparable to the value of the residual oil. So uh, an operation like this wouldn't lose any value in that meal over the, the meal from a, a chemical extraction. Now the oil just has to be degummed and filtered before it goes to the biodiesel plant. Okay, and then uh, depending on your market, it may need RBD as refining, bleaching, and deodorizing. That's usually for oil that goes into the food market. Uh, the degumming is very similar to washing biodiesel. Uh, you mix the oil with warm water, and the gums gel and sink to the bottom, and you just decant the oil, and then your oil is ready for the biodiesel plant. Uh, for animal fat processing, uh, there's not a whole lot different uh, steps involved in this. There's um, the, the material is sized and, and separated before going into a, a boiler where the, uh, the fat and uh, other components are stripped from the bone. Uh, from there it goes into the expeller press and the oil is extracted. Um, restaurant grease processing, I think you're all fairly familiar with that. Um, it's mostly screening and settling. Uh, and then filtering the, the clean oil. Here's a, a, a schematic. It's a little hard to see, I'm sorry about that, but this is what the, uh, a canola plant or a, a sunflower seed plant would look like. You have a, a dryer and a cleaner up front. Uh, then the first green thing there is the, the cold press, then it goes into an extruder. The extruder uh, breaks the Cell, cellular structure down, and then it goes into a second extruder, and from there into a, a dryer and, and guiding operation. Uh, simple schematic of, of a soybean crushing plant and the steps that the soybeans go through. And uh, that's pretty much my uh, presentation. I have a couple of other slides if anyone's interested on some of the economics and uh, uh, some of the, well, comparing soybeans with canola and potential for profits in, in a particular case. So, uh, I'll leave it at that now and I can bring up the slides during the questions and answers.